<laughs> oh, hello. Thank you, so, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Playbill Live with Felicia and Mark. I'm Mark Tigert, editor in chief of Playbill. And I'm Felicia Fitzpatrick, the social media director. And today's special guests, we've never had this many guests on any installment, on any iteration of this long running talk show. The best of the best. One, two, three. Laura Lee Gayer, Megan Lawrence, Bryce Pinkham from Irving Berlin's Holiday Inn. Remember that from 2016? Yeah, I do. I do. And I got to be there the night they filmed it um, for Broadway HD. Yeah, I was there. I did a Snapchat oh. takeover. That's the TVT of the moment. Yeah. I know. Remember Snapchat? I mean, it's still here and very much engaged, but yeah. Um, I'm a little too young for Snapchat. I use TikTok. Heard of it? Unfamiliar. I'm a millennial. Oh. Um, no, Don't I, mind me. I'm just sipping my gazpacho. Yum. Happy Friday, everybody. I thought, <laughs> why, why did you have that moment? moment? I love this thought show. You know I do. I do. I do. I know I miss our lunch times and our snack times. I don't. <laughs> wow. You, uh, so you might be asking yourself, self, why are three people from the Holiday Inn that played on Broadway in 2016 on, on Play-Doh Live today? Well, <laughs> self, I'll tell you. Because tomorrow we are hosting a watch party on Twitter and Playbill.com uh, and Broadway HD with Holiday Inn the live capture version of the musical. We're having a heat wave. Da, 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 da. A tropical da, heat da, wave. Da, da, da. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Um, we're live tweeting with hashtag holiday in musical. So please join in um, on all the fun. And I'm excited. I'm really excited. I enjoyed the show. Yeah, that I'll was good. Fun. With Corbin in, like, in real time while he's throwing his little fireworks. It's gonna be great. Uh, that was the first show that opened after I joined Playbill. That's true. That was the first opening that I ever worked. That's right. Oh, Memory. So, special place in our hearts. It's so true. Um, but that is not the only watch party we're hosting this weekend, Mark. It's not? No, because we're also going to do the pre-show toast for Allegiant oh. tonight. <laughs> we are. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is on Broadway On Demand, which is probably why it was confusing. But yes, we're going to do the pre-show toast to Allegiance at 7.30 on our Facebook with Telly the Young, Leia Salonga, George Takei, and, and more people from the original company. Um, it's like a virtual red carpet. Yeah. Uh, Ruthie Gerberg's hosting, right? I don't think so. Is she? Didn't she? Pre tape something yesterday? Yes, but that's not what I was sent. I was sent something else. Maybe she's doing oh. something for them. What I've seen involves those three people that I just mentioned. And it's going to be good. Because I, well, I didn't get to see it on Broadway, so I'm excited to watch. So look, you can watch that tonight. Yes. You can watch Holiday Inn tomorrow. Yes. Also over the weekend. Let me get my notes. OK. I, am I, are you going to say what I think you're going to say? Hairspray. <laughs> we all love a good hairspray moment, right? You, re you really love a good hairspray are. moment. Yeah, wherever you are, enjoy the hairspray because you truly can't stop the beat. And also tonight uh, is the live stream of the Cheetah Rivera benefit concert from 2013. Yes, it's going to be a busy weekend. It's, it's always a busy weekend. Plus the drama desks are on Sunday. <sighs> Right. Oh no. I'm we never get to stop. Cool. There's never a moment. Never a dull moment. Uh, my the news that I was most excited about mm -hmm. this week was the Miss Cast Gala is moving online. Yes. June twentieth. Yes. I'm excited for that as well. It's gonna be fun. We should submit something. I mean, I know they have to ask us, but we could submit something. Well, so I've spoken to them, and they only want songs, they only want musical performances. And you know, my big thing that I do at the drop of a hat or at the drop of a glove <laughs> is Gypsy Rosalie's monologue in the dressing room near the end of Gypsy. They should absolutely make an exception for that. I've submitted tape after tape after, I've done it sadder, I've done it brighter, I've done it faster. They just, they want a song and I'm not giving that away for free. I support that, that makes sense. Thank you. They don't know what they're missing, kid. 
I think they do. <laughs> uh, other exciting news. Uh, Playbill is now selling face masks. It's true. On playbillstore.com. It's true. That's playbillstore.com. Yeah. Uh, and related, Broadway Cares just announced its very first virtual... 5K. 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 Yeah, which... How many is, how many miles is that? One, I don't know math. Two, I can't convert metric to US. I don't know, but well, what I was gonna say, I don't know how many miles it is, but I probably would not be able to run it. But you can walk, you can dance, you can leap, you can jete. Uh, they said any kind of movement is welcome, even though it's a 5K. And I was like, thank you for seeing me and including me. I'm gonna do 5K of Ron de Jean. <laughs> yes, you should. I support that wholeheartedly. Um, yeah, I think they're aiming to do it like the big weekend they want everyone to do it is June 13th and 14th, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so you can like fundraise and ask people to make donations for your 5K movement um, and, and support what it cares. I mean, people are getting creative. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do choreography all the way as I walk. Saunter, really, it'll be a saunter, really. Oh, producer Dan has chimed in with uh, uh, 5K is 3.1 miles. Okay, still not runnable for me, to be honest. You know you know how he knows that? Because he can look at a calculator right now or just ask, ask Alexa. Oh, producer I have Dan. One. Producer for Dan. anyone who has uh, that device that I just set off, I'm so sorry. Oh, the only other news before we bring our guests on, because I'm getting so bored of looking at myself. Uh, new Fiddler on the Roof movie. Oh my God. You know I love that show. You <laughs> love it so much you whispered. <laughs> I had to. I had to. I got overwhelmed with emotion. Whew. It was your first. Oh, yeah. Let's that see. That was your first yeah. role on, on stage. It was the first musical I was in. I was a little girl named Anya. And. Uh, it was amazing. I just love the music and I love the story and it has a special place in my heart, so I can't wait. Well, I'm, I love that for you. And Thomas Kale is gonna direct. Yes, more importantly than my connection to Fiddler on the Roof, yeah. No. Thank you. I feel supported and loved by you, which is what you we all do during this time. Always take precedence over Tony Award winners. That is true. Oh my gosh, Catherine, thank you for never being bored of us, because my goodness. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're questionable and we're a lot. Like, it's fine, especially by the time Friday rolls around. True. Friday, am I right? Week this week is a thing. I'm like, I think all Was your work compacted. I, I'm not sure anymore. Shall anyway. we bring our special guests on? Because that's the whole process. Let's. All right. I'm going to do a drum roll while you bring them on. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Guys, thank you so much for joining us from your quarantine corners. Thanks for having us. Uh, so I guess Holiday Inn, first of all, uh, what was it like filming, having it filmed when you had already been doing it for however many months? Ooh. Did it throw it off? Were you having to constantly adjust like reactions? Who wants to take that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a hand raising system here, so. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, I don't know, did we adjust things, guys? I guess we did. You know, the biggest adjustment was seeing a bunch of cameras moving around in front of us. We're, you know, used to not see, being able to see so much. Um, and then we would see like the sort of red eye of the camera recording and moving throughout the theater. Um, so it took a couple of sort of passes at it to get used to seeing that. But as far as the performance went, you know, we did it pretty far on into our run. So um, I know for me, I've been doing the same thing since since opening. So, you know, I was just a robot by then, but. Um, well, famously, so, no. you're, famously, you're the Ethel Merman of today's Broadway stars. Like, yes. you said it and you forget it. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So Don't try to nice. change me. It was nice that we've been doing it for so long, so we weren't trying to navigate and figure out these performances. We already knew them. I mean, I definitely gave more when they were taping. 
but um, <laughs> uh, but you know, you know the weird thing for me was that they they needed cameras, I guess, in the front, so they put these dummies in the front, oh, like like basically like pumpkins or basketballs, as I remember, with like wigs on. They so, put hats on them. They put hats on them. You, yeah. you put hats on these like basketballs or something, and so so that it looked like they needed those rows to be open for camera, but you didn't want the shot to look like no one was in the audience. So you were singing to like these weird things that were like all in the front row. It was very That's weird. like, have you seen that restaurants have started doing because they can only be at a certain capacity, but they don't want it to seem, you know, like empty. So they've started putting blow up dolls at tables. It, it's, it was very similar. Very yeah. similar. Except when, you know, when people would laugh and people in the audience's head, you move when you laugh. That's <laughs> the front row. They don't move when they laugh. <laughs> But the front row, regardless, never laughed. So it was fine. I was I was going to say, so basically it was just a matinee audience. Yeah. Subscribers. For me, what was actually uh, different and which kind of threw me off a little bit was um, they had to, because of the cameras, they had to adjust the lighting on stage. Mm -hmm. It had to, everything had to go down a little bit so it wouldn't like blow out the cameras. And it was when you do something over and over again, you get very used to those things. So then you're like coming out for a number and like, oh my God, I'm in pitch black. I mean, it's fully lit, but you feel like you're in pitch black. So. I remember I remember people coming and putting like loads of makeup on me too. They're like, it's HD, Bryce. We got to fix this. <laughs> we were painted whores. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no filter on HD, buddy. We got to okay. do something about this. <laughs> I can't watch it. It's too close. It's too close. <laughs> I was I gonna say. The memories are fine. <laughs> have have uh, Bryce Lorley? Have you guys watched it? Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I I I watched it, but there were definitely parts where I was like, this <laughs> for a big part of it. Only because with it, it's interesting because you are doing it for camera, and they do these beautiful close ups, but you're still playing it for the. 2000 people. So you have these, at least from, I'll speak for myself, like I would have these reactions where it was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Truly, what is happening to your face? You know, someone just says something, like Bryce would say something very little, like, hi, nice to see you. And I would be like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. So, well, like, imagine playing a character that already is like this all the time. <laughs> And then see that it's like it's I, I wanted to like write to people and say I'm so sorry you had to watch to do this. I, I you paid money. I, I don't know how to give this back to you. <laughs> Listen, I went I went and saw it at the movie theater and I thought both your performances were impeccable. Yeah, yeah, that's why we love Bryce. You know, lying. He's lying. He's lying. And and I get a text, I get texts every time we're on PBS. You know, my mom is like, it's on. I oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> I literally got a, I got it. My husband got a Facebook text from my gynecologist wow. who literally I have not seen since I had, you know, babies ages ago. And she recognized me and I thought, I'm not even naked. She just knew it. And she's like, I saw you in Holiday Inn. And so it was just, you know. And she's seen your Holiday Inn. I know she has. <laughs> so it's, it's reaching everyone. Got it. Um, Megan, I just need to address your gynecologist is in contact with your husband? Yeah. Interesting. No, because <laughs> he's on Facebook, and she delivered all three of my babies in New York, and so we became close with her. But I'm not on Facebook, and so she texted him and was like, "I'm sitting and watching TV," and I thought, you know, that's you know, like I said, and I had my pants on, and she still knew who I was. So <laughs> next question. It's interesting because I always tell people I don't like people to leave me voicemails. There's only two people that can leave me voicemails and I will listen to them. One is my agent and the second one is my gynecologist. So I feel very same. My, gyne my gynecologist doesn't even call me. <laughs> I'm sad. Sorry. Price, I'm Side sorry. Sidetrack. <laughs> Going on? No, you go, Felicia. Okay, no, I, was gonna say, I love the iconic dance moments. Like, obviously, the jump rope tap dancing situation is like legendary at this point. But I was curious for you guys, you know, what were some of your favorite moments to work on in the rehearsal room and then see come to life on stage? Bryce. Yep. Bryce, you've been called on. Speaking of the jump rope, um, I will have I will have the world of Playbill Live know that. I was originally one of the people turning the jump rope in rehearsal. Okay. 
And choreographer Dennis Jones gave me many, many chances. <laughs> and I believe, I believe that I got it right several of the hundreds of times that we did it. <laughs> but then we got into tech and Dennis Jones very politely came over to me and said, hey, so about the jump rope. And I was like, please, please take me off it, please. <laughs> So, um, and that's uh, why we got a Tony nomination. I, I, exactly. Yeah. So trust your choreographers. Um, and uh, yeah, Kevin Worley, Kevin Worley stepped into my place and they never missed it once. They never missed it once in live performance. Amazing. Thank, thank God I didn't have to do it because um, it was such a moment of triumph every night. And, right. and, and like tension, we were all watching it. Oh, how are they doing that? Yeah. Um, but the, you know, let me just give a shout out to our ensemble and Incredible ensemble yeah. of dancers and and Dennis Jones and and his associates like they just worked their tails off to to nail that both the big jump rope and then when they all go into the single oh. ones as well yeah. you would see the entire cast before the show they would come out and and make sure they were getting it right like they really dedicated themselves to making that moment as special as it was and it worked yeah what about you it was such a good number I mean Dennis okay. did such a great job and like watching that and i said it was like bryce i mean you at least you know you had so much to do in that number so it was probably wise to take you off the jump rope and you didn't need that extra stress you'd already sung by the time i came into the show you'd already sung like 17 numbers already so it was fine that you didn't have that moment you know <laughs> but it was like you literally everyone like the minute they'd start doing it the wings everyone just watched like right. once you just watch it because it was like heightened every single night which made the number so awesome you know so when it finished you know, and everyone around me was going like this. <laughs> I was like, so it looked like I did, you know. Yeah, you gotta you gotta fit in. Yeah, you yeah. gotta fit in. I, I was there, man, in spirit. You know, I'm in the back, I'm in the back you know. So but it was just and people just the audience always every single night. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like it was uh, you just knew it was gonna land every single night. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So it was really special. Yeah, it was, it was good. Love it. I also love the like, I mean, they, I feel like Dennis incorporated, you know, the fireworks with Corbin tapping and, um, and the, 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 when the girls are in the boarding house and they're all dancing together and all of those fun moments, mm -hmm. what was it like seeing those come together in tech? Like once you guys were in the theater? Uh, well, I, um, I mean, watching Corbin, uh, just master I mean, basically everything he does. It's really frustrating. Um, <laughs> he, uh, watching him just master that number and work on it with Dennis was just so amazing. And then not only that, but you know, I would come on for the like last portion of that firecracker mm -hmm. number. And when we started, you know, I, I, I'm not the most proficient tapper, but um, Corbin and Dennis just like both held my hands all the way through. And I just like every night just loved look. Cause like, it's still like every night I would be like, just clenching everything, just being like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. And just looking over at Corbin, he's like, you're great. You're great. And I'm like, I don't know, but thank you. I feel that. Um, but yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And, and our ensemble just, they worked so hard. They just worked so hard and they were, they were the show. They were the show. It was just like, they were, um, every time that they were on stage is when I felt like the whole audience just sort of leaned in a little bit more because they were just so incredible. So yeah, it was special. I feel like the show did have a good balance though of like these big, you know, spectacular dance numbers of the ensembles, but then like the softer moments, like the, the moments with the students that you had and stuff like that too, which made it enjoyable as a, well, you need that that little palate cleanser every so often, but I it is a these numbers just came they just came out of nowhere and they're they're so amazing that you do need a little breath of silence in that you know and Lori right. is going to be careful with my heart or whatever these moments are White Christmas you just need that yeah. you know which are so I mean every song is a piece of gold so you yeah. need the song once you hit the song I remember I remember in our first run through mm -hmm. during tech which who, who knows, it could have been our last day of tech, our first run through. But um, I remember just being like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on back here, but we're all doing it. Like we, no one's missed a thing yet. You know, we used to, the Easter bonnets, they used to um, store the Easter bonnets oh all God. the way up in the fly, in the flies. Oh, wow. um, and so you would, you would be like getting changed for Easter parade 
and this, you know, the giant thing of hats would be coming down and these ensemble members would be running by, getting pinned into them and then running backstage to get prepared for their entrance. Like, I, I wish that, that it, Broadway HD could have put their cameras backstage. And I think they did at one point. We but, talked about that at one point, but we, we, we had to do, because it was a very big show for quite a small space. It really mm -hmm. was a couple, couple more inches. And like, so, I mean, I did half of my changes in the hallway you know, in a stairwell mm -hmm. because there was no room because everyone's getting, there just was literally no room. Mm -hmm. So it, it just was like, we were, it was an organ, and at first it was a mess. It was, a, I just remember all of us sweating. Of, <laughs> it became like choreography. Oh, she's changed. Now I can go in and get my hat. Now I can go get my hat. Now I get, it was like a whole nother dance routine happening. That was kind of incredible. You know? when, I, when I came out of the, um, out of the floor to do the conducting, Oh yeah! In order to get there, I used to have to crawl on my stomach. I used to get on a little hand cart underneath the stage oh my gosh. While, while Corbin and Laura Lee are singing this beautiful song. And I remember I would use, I used to like swim, <laughs> swim my way out under the stage while they're doing, <laughs> they're singing their song. You know, it's the crazy stuff that goes on backstage to make it look hopefully as effortless as, as it is recorded forever in history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you, didn't you have an entrance from the house too? Or am I making that up? Did I have an entrance from the house, guys? Like, am I a director now? Like, should you have? I don't know. Um, you know, Cor Corbin came down into the house and like yeah. danced, danced oh, along the stairs. He came out drunk. Oh, that's, um, was that the New Year's Eve scene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So great use of space. We love to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious what it was like performing this for the handful of weeks after the holidays ended. <laughs> what were those audiences like? <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. I think people always um, uh, think of Holiday Inn as a, as a Christmas movie. And the, the thing is, is like, it, like, obviously Christmas happens in it, but it's really, a, it's, a, it's a small portion of it. So we were kind of like, you know, we like, it's really celebrates all of these things. And, um, you know, like the Easter parade is one of the biggest numbers and 4th of July is one of the biggest numbers. So we were kind of like, oh great, can we keep doing this till July? Cause that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it, it actually kind of felt, I don't know about you guys, but it felt um, like it fine. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice a, a giant change in the sort of um, energy of the audiences. Though I will say it was pretty special getting to um, getting to sing those songs, you know, around Christmas, uh, you know, and I remember like, I think it actually snowed on one of the days that we had a show. Like, I remember being like, it is a white Christmas. <laughs> you know, um, and then being like, I'm late. <laughs> See, and that's when you needed to have done the show in a barn, like in White Christmas, where you can just open the doors and have a big reveal. Yeah. Mm. We should be directors, is what I'm learning, Mark. We got this. Entrances from the house, the barn. I'm gonna add that to my list. Please do. Please do. <laughs> um, well, I before we let you guys go and wrap up, I'm curious what what's the memory that um, that you cherish the most from your time doing Holiday Inn? Good question. No. That's a hard Felicia, one. you want to go first? Right. <laughs> I think um, the reason we all pause is because it's hard to choose. But um, the one that comes to mind, usually mine are always like funny, <laughs> funny things that have to do with the cast, um, you know, the memories you build with people. And mine was, the one that just came to mind was when we performed for, what was it, guys? The Today Show, I think, early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get up bright, bright and early, see all your friends in costume and makeup, and you're like, what are we doing here? And then they roll cameras, and I'll never forget, if you go back and look at the footage, I did this thing <laughs> in the show where I, like, put my arms out at some point, and it never happened once on stage, but, of course, live on national TV, <laughs> like, I did one thing, and my, the button <laughs> of my sweater just went pop right at the... <laughs> Right at the exact moment in the music where you couldn't believe that it wasn't intentional. Yeah. Um, and I remember looking back at the footage with uh, the cast that night and just howling at it. Um, you know, it's, it, it usually is about the, when, when you do a show so many times, it usually becomes about the, the, the things you 
don't show everybody, but that mm -hmm. you enjoy together backstage. So like, that's one example of the silliness that we would get up to backstage. I don't know, ladies, do you remember anything? I, you know, I, have, I have one that, um, Bryce, I don't know if you'll remember this. And I, so there was, there was one show and, you know, we were really lucky that the, the audiences really did, uh, really seemed to enjoy the show and they would laugh there was a lot of laughter and stuff but there was like this one show where there was like there was a very very distinct laugh coming from like the first second row and this person it was lovely but they were really enjoying the show and they were laughing at everything but this laugh was just i've never heard anything like it before and it just kept happening and we just all started getting the giggles a little bit because every time this laugh would come and I'll just do it. It was it was sort of like this like a joke would happen and it was like oh, oh. Was just that every time and then we're getting to the part where Bryce and I would sing White Christmas and it was like I just I saw it coming from so far away. I don't remember what would happen but there's a part right before we would sing it where there was a joke and usually people would laugh and I knew it was going to happen that we were going to say the joke and we were going to hear the laugh. And then we would have to sing this really like quiet, beautiful ah. song. I was so unprofessional. I mean, I, like tears were just streaming down my face that I ended up playing it, that it was like, I was just so overcome with emotion for white Christmas. I was just like, I'm, dreaming of a white Christmas. Like it was, I could not keep it together. It was, and, and then Bryce and I have to sit on the bench together to play the piano. And I was like, if you look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose, like, I'm gonna have to walk off stage. I'm gonna have to just walk off stage. It was so bad, but it was like, I also love those moments there. It's like so painfully wonderful when those yeah. moments happen. I call those uh, church moments. Like my sister and I getting like, Ooh, stop it, no. <laughs> it's the church giggles that, that are like giggles like nothing else and on stage they're they're amazing but out, while you're in it it's also so frightening because you can't oh. get out of it and the, more right. spiral, spiral. the worse it gets and you're spiraling and spiraling, yeah. spiraling so that you end up like looking like over the person while you're talking <laughs> or like or trying to be like dead puppies dead puppies dead puppies okay like, what makes me upset you know uh -huh. like, out of this world so but they're also like the best memories Oh, it's the best. It was the best. Oh, yeah. it was so good. It was so good. So that was one of my favorites. I was really waiting for like a big reveal that it was Barbara Streisand laughing in the audience or something. That would have been better. If, <laughs> if that had happened, I would have left the stage. I would have, I would have been like, I can't. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> um, Megan, before we wrap up, did you have a, did you have a story? Why did I not just talk? Um, I don't I mean, <laughs> I, no, I, you know. I just want to honestly, those are moments like where we all just were, we just had a good time doing the show. It was a great show to do. There were moments that I remember very specifically, whether good or bad, and this was not like doing the show the night of the election. Like, wow. Like, mm -hmm. like we, we went through like this moment when the show was so joyous and it was hard to, it was hard to sort of have that moment where like you could feel throughout the evening, whatever your political beliefs are, but like there was just this air in the theater and everyone sort of was trying to stay off social media so we could do the show, but you know, that did not happen. And so throughout the evening, I just remember, it wasn't a good moment, but I'm saying, I just remember the weight of that, that evening, like, and going out on the streets afterwards, remember guys, and it was like, you could hear a pin drop. Like it was just yeah. crazy. Yeah. I remember Bryce the next day, if it was the next day, whatever, I don't remember. But, you know, doing a speech at the end of the night, just saying, like, we're here to, you know, entertain and we'll get through and we'll figure it out. And it's like those kind of powerful moments in theater that are, you know, are about what's going on in the world and about what we're doing it for. So um, yeah. it, it was actually strangely a good memory, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's okay. the, the moments where we, we remember that we're, like, we're humans who come in to do this thing, you know, and the show sort of lives in its own place where it has, there's an expectation that we've all set for the show every night. And as humans, sometimes we come in well below that expectation level and have to find a way to get ourselves there energetically and spiritually and, you know, 
emotionally. And, and I, I remember that very well. I'm glad you, you brought it up that doing the show after the election in a way felt like we had to choose to make it a public service mm -hmm. to just say, everybody come to the theater and we'll take your mind off whatever your mind is on, no matter how you feel about things, we'll do it together for two hours or however long our show was. And, um, and then we'll all go back to our, our lives. Um, but yeah, really powerful stuff actually. It was, it was really in intense, you know, and like, especially mm -hmm. if you're like that where it's really a happy show and the energy was just, it took a lot more, a little more effort to get everybody there, <laughs> you know, each time, you know, but it's important to do that because you need that, you know, it's like going to the movies. It's like, just forget, I need to forget about this for like two hours. That's all. I just need a brain break. As I do with my daughter when she's doing homework, I was like, take a brain break. Take a brain break. <laughs> Well, and that's why that's why we're so excited that we're getting to do this watch party yeah. with Broadway HD and Concord and Roundabout tomorrow night because this is the kind of show and like stream that people are really craving right now. Yeah. Well, it's 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 what I always like love to. I, I was so glad when you when it was announced that you guys were doing this because it was also you know this was uh, Irving Berlin had the idea to do this to help get. Uh, the country and the world's mind off of World War II. It was his idea yeah. to be like, oh, what what is something that people love? Oh, the holidays. Well, I'm just going to do something about all the holidays, not all the holidays, but all the holidays. And um, it's just a, a so it's it's interesting that we have another time where the entire world is being affected, and hopefully this can just um, make people all smile for those two hours or however long it is. So everybody tune in tomorrow, Broadway HD, follow along on Plato's Twitter account for the watch party. And Felicia, that starts at 8 p.m., correct? Yes, it does. 8 p.m. Eastern. I don't wanna hear from California, Eastern. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. Thank, thank you. you. Namaste, thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. And everybody tune in tomorrow. Bye, Bryce. Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.